The following video describes a process of one way to build a college loft bed with desk. I make no claims to the safety and efficiency of this design. Please build at your own risk. And take care with any use of power tools or lifting heavy objects. Feel free to make suggestions about the design and building process in the comments below. Our wood we got. And we have uh, four 4x4s. Four Four two by eights. One of my patients said, "Whenever you start a new project, you always get a new tool." So we picked this uh, mitre saw up from Lowe's. It was on sale for seventy-nine dollars. This is my original plan. Things change quite a bit, but it'll just give you an idea of what I was shooting for. This bed was built for a tall individual requiring a US size twin XL mattress and also a higher than average desk height. There are a couple of adjustments you may want to make to the dimensions. The primary one being the desk height, so please check with the size of your individual uh, the desk height they prefer. The desk height is a function of the height of the middle step. If you would like a desk height of approximately 28 inches, reduce the middle step height to 27.25 inches at the top. And then the other dimension would be the mattress to ceiling distance. So if you have a very low ceiling, you may want to lower the mattress support height to less than 61.5 inches off the floor. This would happen when you cut the 4x4 length. We cut the 4x4 length to 60 inches. If you would like to make the bed lower, then reduce that cut of the 4x4 to less than 60 inches. First step is to cut the four 2x8s to a length of 79 inches. I use the miter saw to perform this, but that could easily be done with a circular saw. If you use a circular saw, just use a block of wood clamped next to the circular saw to give you a straight cut. The 2x4 steps are recessed into the 2x8 and these need to be cut at the appropriate dimensions each cutout is cut to a depth of two and a quarter inches and a width of three and a half inches. The two by four needs to be able to slide into this three and a half inch cutout, so be generous with your three and a half inches. Line up all the two by four so they're exactly the same position according to the floor end, and then clamp both ends of the two by four. Use a straight block of wood clamped on top of the 2x8 so that when the guide of the circular saw is flush against the wood, the blade is on the line you have previously marked to cut.
Okay, good. With the depth of the circular saw still set to two and a quarter inches, cut many little grooves in between the two lines we cut with the guide. You do not really need the guide to cut these as they do not need to be perfectly straight. Clamp two of the 2x8s together, taking care to make sure the bottoms are aligned perfectly and then mark the cutouts for the two back lower supports. It's crucial that the cutout for the upper one of these, the one at approximately 30 inches, is level with the middle step cutout. So take a set square and just mark a line from the top of the middle step cutout through to the edge that you need to cut. Okay, this part's a bit tricky. I've already attached the 4x4 four four to these ones here, so they are matching set. Now, as you remember, we cut three holes for the ladder on every piece but only on two pieces we cut this back stabilizer the rear stabilizer that goes against the wall so we want to make sure we we put we line these up because each pair should have one with the rear stabilizer and one without so this is a pair, 
Uh, the issue is going to be, I've got my lines, or I have no lines there, on this one, I've got my lines for the 4x4, four four. I don't know if that comes out, but there's lines on here, and this is the one with the rear stabilizer, which, dang it, which matches this one with the rear stabilizer. So I've got to make sure I put the 4x4 four four on the correct side of this one with the rear stabilizer. If I put it on this side, then when I turn it over, it'll be facing that one, and then they'll be messed up. So, what I need to do is make sure that I put this on top and say, yeah, that lines up with the rear stabilizer. This is the facing one. So then I need to put the 4x4 four four on this side here. So I'm going to flip that over. Now I have to draw my lines on this one. I'll deal with that one in a minute. So I've got to put a 4x4 four four on this. So the 4x4 four four needs to be in by an inch and a half. and a half from this edge. Get the 4x4 which has already been cut. I'm going to put this 4x4 on those lines. I want to choose a flat edge so I don't want a lot of rocking. Okay, so that's the side I want. Find the wood glow.
Now we're going to clean up the, the spillage. Deciding how long to cut the 2x4 ladder rungs is a bit tricky. If you cut them too short, then the mattress won't fit on the mattress support section. If you cut them too long, then they'll be too far apart. For this bed, it turned out that the ladder rungs needed to be 31 inches and 5 eighths. But you could try measuring your bed, so place it on the ground, kind of in the position it would be like this one here, and measure from one side of the 4x4 to the other, and try and get that around 39 inches and then measure the distance between the two the in, insides of the two cutouts understanding that it's unlikely that you're going to get it perfectly flush so if you measure it so that it had come out at 39 which is what I did it ended up coming out at about 39 and a quarter which gives a mattress a little bit of wiggle room
So you want to pre-drill holes into this one by one. Remember that it's technically 0.75 by 0.75. One by one is a support rail for the cross struts that are holding the mattress. So we wanted a very strong bond. Therefore we use Gorilla Glue. You'll need to dampen one surface of the wood. We're dampening the two by four here. And then you'll apply the Gorilla Glue to the dry surface of the one by one. Align the one by one along the edge of the two by four so that the bottom surfaces are flush. Clamp and then check your alignment with a piece of wood to make sure that they line up as close to flush as possible. Screw the one by one into the two by four. Okay, so this uh, is partially finished bed. Basically, we saw that this, this piece was all one, the two ends were one pieces. We made this here, which was the 2x4 with the um, cross strut rail applied. This was 3 quarters of an inch by 3 quarters of an inch. It was glued with very strong glue and it was screwed in. So we needed those two. Then we needed this, these two 4 by 2 by 4s were cut as well, and they were about 83 inches. Uh, and when we pre-drilled these holes here for the screws into the 2 by 4 but not into this 2 by 8 this, this one here, um, we pre-drilled pre holes into that as well. All right, so for the construction, basically what we did was we had a couple of levels. We had two levels. So we put that on here and kept it vertical. Someone was holding that. Then we had someone do that at the other end. Then we rested the, the bed crossbar things, these ones, on there. And we tried to line everything up. We put a set square in here to make sure that was a right angle. And then we made sure that the, the distance from here to the other end was similar from the bottom to the top. And then we screwed in, one. we put one screw in this one, one here, one there, one over there. Then we checked everything again. Then we put these things on. Okay, so now we put these guardrails on. We may put in a corner stabilizer here. We may not. We measured this distance here from here. We measured right here from here to there. And it was about 32 and a quarter. And then we proceeded to cut these cross struts and they were cut out of the one by fours we bought and they just sort of sit up there and I cut let's see how many we have two four six eight ten twelve I cut twelve and that seems like about enough apparently for a foam mattress like a thermo rest most of the time you don't want more than three inches in between but we went with the inner spring mattress anyway. Okay, so this is that two by four that's gonna sit in here. And this is gonna help support the desk. Can you see that? So I've set it up so it's gonna sit about that far in. I put it uh, five and a half inches in from this thing there. So I mark this for pre-drilling these holes. I'm going to pre-drill those holes there. Okay. 
Okay, this is the ply wood. So I measured the length. So I need that. I'm going to mark that here. So I'm going to cut this off. So we get a straight edge. We're going to put this here. is one and three eighths.
So you need to make sure you leave a gap there. You're, gonna, you're not going to get it in if it's too tight, those dimensions. Unfortunately, I made a bit of a miscalculation with this step and found it very difficult to get the plywood table in one piece onto its supports. Hopefully with the cutout dimensions I gave you, you should be able to slide the table in through the top after you remove the struts and sort of slide it in through the top and then lay it down on the middle step and the two two by fours. In hindsight, it would have been easy to cut the table like we did in 16 and 17 prior to step 12. And then before we put the bed together, rest the table on the middle rung of the ladder on each end and then put the table together by putting the support rail on and the 2x4 on like we did in step 12. The table is secured along the back support 2x4 and either side on the middle rung of the ladder. Pre-drill holes approximately every 8 inches. Wrap a piece of tape around your drill bit exposing only three quarters of an inch so that you don't drill through into the 2x4s. And then if possible use a countersinker to create a countersunk area so that the screw head doesn't get in the way of your foot or your sock when you're stepping up onto the table. Now this space here, because the, the cross support is approximately here, to create access to the table, this was designed so that you could cut a semicircle in here if you wanted to. So you could cut a semicircle with a jigsaw so that you'd have access to the back of the table, but then you're risking hitting your head if you're a very tall person. Use the 45 degree angle on your mitre saw or use a hand saw to cut 45 degree angle on both ends of a 2x4 approximately 15 to 18 inches in length and these can be used to support the corners of the mattress support rail. These screw holes need to be cut at a 45 degree angle to the plane of the 2x4. So use your set square to create a, a way to clamp the corner support at a 45 degree angle and then you can drill vertically. You can also use your countersinker to sink the screw head a bit in. Try and get them so they're pretty flush at both ends. Keep your hand out of the way of the tool. Okay, so there's a ladder here, right, which is all good. Now, uh, the problem is if you have the bed in the middle of the room and there's no wall here, the pillow will fall down. So I cut a piece of plywood that was cut off the table and I basically cut it so it'll fit in here, just in front of the mattress, like so. And then this will prevent the pillow from falling off. You could buy a new bit of plywood and make one that matches this height here. 